Hi, so this is the last video in our series of videos explaining the basics of job order cost accounting. If you haven't seen the previous videos yet, you can find them in the links in the description below. I highly recommend you watch them before this one because they basically cover everything except for this last part where we adjust our factory overhead. Let's get started on this last topic. So again, in the last video, I mentioned that what if our allocated overhead using our POHR and our allocation base is not equal to the overhead we actually incurred. What if we incurred 5,170 of other overhead instead of our last amount, which was 5,070? This would add $100 to our actual incurred overhead and makes it 7,140, which is actually higher now than how much we allocated using our POHR of 1.6. So what happens to this? What will we do? So this is something we call under applied overhead, meaning we applied under the actual incurred amount, meaning our POHR was not able to accurately determine how much we're supposed to allocate for our overhead. Meaning instead of allocating the total cost of 7140 our POHR only came up with 7,040 when we multiplied it with our allocation base. So meaning we under-applied it, meaning we did not apply enough overhead. We did not allocate enough overhead compared to our actual incurred overhead. Let's take the other example. What if we only spent 4,970 in factory overhead, in other factory overhead? So our total costs used in production for our factory overhead is 6940 only, which is $100 lesser than our allocated overhead of 7040 Meaning in this case, we over-applied our overhead, meaning we put too much overhead, we allocated too much. Our POHR was higher than we expected it to be. Our allocated overhead was higher than what we forecasted our incurred overhead to be. We thought it would reach a th uh, an amount of 7,040, but actually, we only incurred 6,940, meaning we over-applied or we over-allocated our overhead. So to make this more um, digestible, uh, we have an example. So let's say we have job one, and job one's our only job in entire production. Um, it has direct labor costs of $100, it has direct material costs of $100, we have a predetermined overhead rate set by management at 1.5 based on past data and an allocation base of direct material cost. So from this, we know that our, our overhead is $100 from our direct material multiplied by 1.5, which is our POHR. That equals to $150. In the journal, it would look like this. Um, we credit factory payroll because of the direct labor costs and we debit it into our job, our goods and process inventory of our job. Same with raw materials inventory. We know we spent $100 on job one, so we take away $100 worth of inventory and we put it into our goods and process inventory for job one. And for our allocated overhead, based on our POHR and our allocation base, is $150. So we transfer $150 worth of factory overhead to our goods in process inventory for job one. So everything's nice, everything looks great. But then what if when we look at our records at the end of the month, job one actual overhead costs at the end of period is just $200. We have no indirect materials, we have no indirect labor, we just have a utilities expense of $200, which is a factory overhead expense for our job, meaning our factory overhead is debited 200 and our utilities payable is credited 200, meaning we actually did not apply enough overhead to our job. We under applied the overhead. So now what do we do? Well, if we look at the T account of factory overhead, we can see that our factory overhead has been credited 150 because we transferred that cost to our goods and process inventory for job one. So that's in the right side. But we found out later on that we actually spent 200 on our factory overhead. So we credit utilities payable by 200 and we debit into it factory overhead for 202. And you can see in the T account, it's not balanced. We still have a $50 balance in our factory overhead, meaning we under applied it. We did not apply the entire 200, but we only applied 150. So what do we do? 
to balance this t account clearly what we have to do is we have to put another 50 to the right meaning we still have to credit factory overhead with another 50 so now the question is what will we debit it with and we debit it with costs of goods sold okay so why do we debit it with costs of goods sold why don't we debit it with raw materials inventory why don't we debit it with utilities expense why don't we debit it with utilities payable well, because what happened here is that when we allocated costs to job one, we only allocated 150, when in truth we spent 200. And these costs will one day reach cost of goods sold because they are the costs of our goods that will be sold. Job one will soon become a cost of goods sold when it's sold. It will not stay in goods and process inventory. And for us, at the end of the period, it's very hard for us to track individual jobs and say, ah, this amount of factory overhead that we missed to apply is in job 592 in its finished goods. See, we don't know where it is. We don't know at which exact point did we forget to apply factory overhead. Meaning the best place or the safest place to apply it is our cost of goods sold because we know one day this job one will be sold. Meaning all the costs will end up lumping up to the right, lumping up to the cost of goods sold. That way, we can make the decision that we have to credit our factory overhead because we underapplied it, meaning we did not apply enough, and we debit it into our cost of goods sold because we know that one day, this job will be sold. I hope that made sense because it's actually a very tricky subject to, to explain properly, but basically that's the idea. Imagine if you had more than 100 jobs and they're all in different stages of their production. Some of them are in goods in process, some of them are finished, some of them are sold. It's very hard to allocate your factory overhead that you underapplied to specific jobs because, like we said, factory overhead is not direct. We don't know which jobs they're assigned to. So what we do the safest answer for us is to debit it to cost of goods sold directly because we know all of these jobs we have, all of these 100 plus jobs we have, will one day end up in cost of goods sold. Now that's how I see to explain it. That's how I understand the topic. So I hope that's enough to explain it as well. Um, it's a, For me, it's really hard to understand. Um, it took me a while to understand this. But just know that we have to debit cost of goods sold if we have underapplied overhead. Like we transfer the the overhead that we failed to apply into our cost of goods sold. So that's it for under applied overhead. So for over applied overhead, I challenge you to figure it out yourself. It's basically the same thing except except it's reversed, meaning you have too much allocated overhead and now your cost of goods sold is overstated. So that's a clue. I'm I hope you understood that. If you didn't, you can tell me in the comment section below. I agree, it's a very confusing topic. <laughs> and I hope I could find a better way to explain it. If I can, I will re-upload this video to explain it better to you. And that's the ending of our series of videos on job order cost accounting. It's basically the basics. Um, there are, of course, more complex ways, more complex methods on doing this but for now these are the basics of job order cost accounting i really hope that you learned something out of any of the videos i posted and if something still confuses you don't hesitate to go back to any of the videos uh, you can find them in the links in the description below or if you have any specific questions that weren't discussed in the video feel free to comment i will get back to you as soon as possible and if you have any feedback please do tell me also through the comment section below i'll do my best to make these videos better if you have any feedback regarding a certain video and if I have to change it, I am very willing to re-upload them and make them better. Just do tell me. So thank you for listening and until next time, thank you and see you.